In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate your own estimates for reliability and average variance extracted, AVE, in M+. Now in a previous video, I've already shown you how to set up a CFA, a measurement model. So for the sake of this video, I'm not going to review very in depth all those little things, such as how to title something, how to get the data, how to name the variables, which variables to use, all of those things I've covered before. So I'm going to start down here with the model in the CFA, we set latent factors by their indicators. Now what I'm doing here is slightly different from what I've done in previous videos. In this one, I'm telling M plus to remove the automatic constraint on the indicator path going from CR to CR1. And I'm going to manually set that later down here as the variance constraint on the latent factor. Additionally, I've added labels for these estimates, the estimates that run from the factor to the indicators. They will be labeled CR1 through 4. Same applies to feedback for F and participation part. Now down here I set the variance constraint of each factor to 1. In covariance-based structural equation modeling, every factor needs a constraint. Typically, it's automatically set on the first indicator for that factor. However, in this example, I'm removing that constraint that is placed automatically, and I'm manually setting it to the variance of the factor. Another new thing I'm doing is I'm adding labels to the error variances for each of these indicators. Since I already have indicators named CR1, 2, 3, and 4, I'm going to name the error variances 5 through 8. Same with feedback, same with participation. Now, on to the model constraints. This is the big part where we calculate our own measures for reliability and average variance extracted, which is a measure of convergent validity. The way you do that is you state you want a new variable, or a new set of variables in this case, which I'm naming the latent factor reliability, the latent factor sum of loadings squared, and the latent factor sum of error variances. These will be used to calculate reliability. I calculate the sum of loadings squared here, which is just the sum of loadings squared, that's what this means, and then I calculate the sum of error variances, which is just adding up all the error variances, and then the reliability is calculated as that sum of loadings squared divided by the sum of loadings squared plus the sum of error variances. Then to calculate the AVE, first we state that we want a new variable called AVE, and we'll also need something called the sum of squared loadings which is slightly different from the sum of loadings squared. The sum of squared loadings is each loading squared added up so that all of the loadings squared become a sum. We could then use that with the previously created sum of error variances to calculate our AVE. We do the same for feedback and for participation, literally just copying and pasting and editing things. And then we ask for the standardized output. And that's it. Let's run this and see what happens. Here's the output. Now, the new parameters are hiding. Down here, if you go to the standardized model results, which is linkable if you have chosen in M+, the HTML output. If plain text output is checked, just check HTML output. Then you should be able to click on standardized model results and then scroll up just slightly and you'll see new additional parameters and everything we calculated is now in here. All we are really interested in though is the reliability measure. Here's the estimate for that, should be above 0.7, and the convergent validity estimate, the AVE, which should be above 0.5. We want that for each of these three factors. So it looks like we're good for CR. For F, or feedback, looks like that's above 0.7, this is above 0.5, and then for participation, again above 0.7, and above 0.5, so we're good. What we would do is copy these estimates out of here and put them in our report with an interpretation that we have indeed met requirements for convergent validity and reliability. Now, what about discriminant validity? I didn't calculate anything for that. Well, according to Fornell Larker, the square root of the AVE should be greater than any other correlation with another factor. So let's use participation, for example. If we were to calculate the square root of the AVE, that's 0.61 times 0.61 on a calculator, 0.61 times 0.61, which is 0.372. Well, let's go down to the standardized model results and look at the correlations. 0.372. 
if we look at participation with CR and F right here, here are those two correlations. Are these both less than 0.372? Yes. So we have discriminant validity with participation. We could do the same with feedback and customer rejection. And that's all there is to it. I haven't developed any fancy tool to build a table for you or a matrix that outlines all of this interprets for you, but you can do this part.